Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, I'm thrilled to have with us Dr. Terry McCallum. Terry got his bachelor's degree as well as his PhD from the University of Ottawa, where he worked in the Burial Group. There he studied photoredox catalysis with gold, as well as other novel types of photomediated transformations. He subsequently joined the Lin Lab at Cornell University as a postdoctoral researcher, where he investigated bimetallic radical redox relay catalysis. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Terry. Thank you very much for joining us today. I'd like to start by thanking Matt for the opportunity to talk to you today about one of my favorite topics in radical chemistry, redox neutral carbon-carbon coupling reactions and the logic to designing catalytic transformations in the most efficient and waste limiting fashion. I think for many chemists, we first learn of radical chemistry in an undergraduate course where the reduction of halo alkanes is achieved by the use of stoichiometric tin hydrides. The Giza reaction serves as an excellent example of the challenges inherent to designing reactions using such methodology. I encourage any chemist to check out his work as he advanced the concepts of polar effects in radical addition reactions, along with Minnesee and Roberts, as I will be alluding to throughout this presentation. The powerful chemistry that was developed using tin reagents suffers from competitive rates in the propagation steps between desired product forming pathways and undesired byproduct forming pathways. Upon initiation of the stano radical, a very fast reaction occurs with the iodo alkane to form a nucleophilic alkyl radical. Trouble arises when considering that the rate of the desired radical addition to the electrophilic acceptor alkene is slower than the rate of reaction with another equivalent of tributyl tin hydride. The way to mitigate this pathway is to carefully use the concentration of the radicals in solution. A solution of initiator and stannate is added slowly via syringe pump to decrease the effective stannyl radical concentration along with a large excess of the alkene to favor addition. Over the past decade, the use of photoredox catalysis has become a mainstay in the development of new carbon-carbon coupling methodology. A typical catalytic cycle consists of excitation of the photocatalyst by a photon, followed by either oxidative quenching with an acceptor molecule or reductive quenching with a donor molecule. The quenching is in reference to the oxidation state of the photocatalyst. For example, if the photocatalyst receives an electron during quenching of the excited state, it is reduced, hence reductive quenching. The following intermediate can then undergo further single electron transfer reactions to either reduce or oxidize the catalyst back to the ground state. In a redox neutral sense, a closed catalytic cycle would involve the generation of a radical intermediate via quenching of the excited state, followed by an addition reaction where the next intermediate reacts again with the photocatalyst to give the desired product and regenerate the ground state. There is always the possibility of a chain reaction process or an open cycle where mechanistic studies can be used to determine the extent to which chain processes may be at play. Typically when designing a redox neutral pathway, emphasis is placed on the substrate used to generate the alkyl radical. This figure shows a variety of commonly used radical precursors and their respective redox potentials in volts versus SCE. In my opinion, carboxylates are amongst the most readily available substrates when considering reductive quenching pathways, and bromoalkanes are the most useful when considering oxidative quenching pathways. It should be mentioned that redox active NHPI esters are very useful reagents as well as they are readily available through a DCC coupling of the parent carboxylic acid. We can then imagine a redox diagram placing the desired substrate in reference to the excited state redox potentials of a variety of photocatalysts. This aids in the selection of a given catalyst where a chemist would choose a catalyst that has a sufficient redox potential to undergo quenching with the substrate. A variety of other aspects may be used to evaluate catalyst selection as well, such as solubility, excited state lifetime, and kinetic quenching data if available. Returning to the challenges associated with the Giza reaction, Okada and Oda developed a net reducing photocatalyzed approach using redox active esters and Bina as a stoichiometric reductant. Macmillan subsequently developed the corresponding redox neutral approach using only a carboxylate and a radium based polypyridyl photocatalyst to achieve the desired reaction with only carbon dioxide as the byproduct. Mechanistically, the excited state photocatalyst, denoted with a star, undergoes reductive quenching to generate the nucleophilic alkyl radical that then adds to the electrophilic acceptor. The following electrophilic radical intermediate is much more susceptible to reduction and reacts readily with the reduced photocatalyst intermediate to give the desired product and regenerates the ground state photocatalyst. 
The controlled formation of alkyl radicals also eliminates most byproduct forming pathways as the concentration of radicals can only ever be as high as the loading of catalyst. Using this strategy, a variety of oxidizable substrates can be used to generate alkyl radicals and undergo other transformations such as heteroaerylations, aerylations, allylations, as well as alkyl and alkynylations. The reactions share an intermediate in common, though different in structure, but similar in the ability to undergo further reduction to generate the desired products on the right. Of course, these reactions can be achieved using reducible substrates and stoichiometric reductants or cathodic reduction pathways with electrochemistry. The options are truly mind-blowing. However, redox-neutral photocatalyzed pathways and anode-cathode paired electrolysis are among the most waste-limiting strategies available. Likewise, a redox diagram can be envisioned for oxidative quenching processes. An interesting challenge remains in effectively generating alkyl radicals from bromoalkanes given their high reduction potentials and wide availability. The Minnesi reaction has gained popularity as of recent as it offers an ideal test track for the addition of nucleophilic alkyl radicals. The title reaction was first developed in the 70s using a silver catalyzed decarboxylation of carboxylic acids in presence of stoichiometric persulfate as oxidant. Although the reaction was a breakthrough in obtaining medicinally relevant alkyl substituted heteroarenes, the conditions can be considered harsh and often result in byproduct formation. As part of my PhD work in the burial lab at the University of Ottawa, I developed the redox neutral variant of this reaction using a binuclear gold photocatalyst. Although bromoalkanes have high reduction potentials, and in this case higher than that of the excited state photocatalyst, the gold based complex has a different mechanism in its bag of tricks. At ground state, the complex bears little orophilic interaction. However, upon excitation, an electron is promoted from the 5dz squared orbital to the 6s or p orbital, resulting in the formation of a formal gold gold bond along the z axis. This process liberates a coordination site along this axis where bromoalkanes rapidly form an exiplex, which allows for the oxidative quenching process to proceed through an inner sphere pathway. This process differentiates the catalyst from most iridium and ruthenium based polypyridyl complexes and organic dyes that react mainly through outer sphere electron transfer pathways. The formation of nucleophilic alkyl radicals is then electronically well aligned to undergo addition with the electrophilic protonated heteroarene. The following intermediate is then oxidized by the photocatalyst intermediate, giving the desired product and regeneration of the ground state catalyst. Notably, this reaction was amenable to polarity reversal radical addition processes such as a three-component coupling reaction that is notoriously difficult using radical chemistry. In this scheme, the electrophilic radical generated from the alpha bromoester when in presence of only the electrophilic heteroarene is not electronically well matched and does not undergo efficient addition. However, when an alkene is added, the electrophilic radical undergoes addition to give the relatively nucleophilic alkyl radical that can then complete the addition to the heteroarene. This reaction tolerated a variety of alkenes where cyclic alkenes gave the desired products in a diastereoselective manner. This work truly ignited my love for redox neutral coupling processes. Since publication, this field has seen many advances such as Fu's use of redox active esters, FIP's use of chiral phosphonates to achieve the enantial selective Minnesi reaction, and Studer's combination of polarity reversal radical additions with the enantial selective methodology. In a general sense, the power of this strategy lies in its general application to a variety of reactions, where reducible substrates can undergo transformations like cascade aerylations, alkyl and alkynylations, semi-pinnacle and neophyll rearrangements, and alpha keto functionalization reactions. Shifting to dual catalyzed processes, I think Molander, Doyle, and McMillan's back-to-back -back discoveries of the dual photoredox nickel catalyzed cross-coupling to give alkyl functionalized arenes was a major advancement in redox neutral carbon-carbon coupling methodology, as well as chemists' perception that radical reactions can be controlled and used in industry. I've heard on many occasions this be likened to that of the Suzuki Miyora coupling. In this process, the nickel catalyst undergoes oxidative addition to a haloarene, giving a resting state nickel-2 complex. Upon reductive quenching, the alkyl radical undergoes oxidative radical addition to the nickel center, giving the nickel-3 complex. Upon reductive elimination, a wide variety of products can be obtained. 
the nickel-1 complex is then reduced by the photocatalyst intermediate regenerating both catalysts. Molander and later Macmillan and Fu developed an angioselective variance of this reaction showing the diverse applicability of this process. I just want to briefly highlight that this transformation has recently been applied to the three-component polarity reversal radical addition strategy in an enantioselective manner. Gutierrez and Chu showed that the nucleophilic terp-butyl radical selectively adds to the electrophilic acrylate rather than addition and reductive elimination at the nickel center, resulting in the three-component coupling product over the two-component product. Interestingly, computation supported that the addition to the nickel center may occur through a tetrahedral nickel complex rather than a square planar nickel complex. From an electronic perspective, it also makes sense that the nucleophilic radical would selectively add to the electrophilic acrylate over the relatively electron-dense transition metal center, where the following electrophilic radical would then be well aligned to undergo addition to nickel. The selectivity is further supported given the relative concentration of the electrophilic acceptor versus the nickel catalyst. Another topic in redox neutral carbon carbon coupling reactions is the concept of radical redox relay catalysis. Before I started my postdoctoral work in the Lynn lab at Cornell, the group had discovered that the use of chiral titanium saline complexes could be used to catalyze an enantioselective formal 3 plus 2 reaction. Generating the redox active titanium 3 complex using manganese, this oxophilic complex binds to the carbonyl of the cyclopropyl aryl ketone, injecting an electron and triggering rupture of the cyclopropyl ring. The following intermediate adds to the styrene derivative, followed by cyclization onto the titanium 4 enolate complex. The titanium 3 complex is reformed upon formation of the desired product in high yield, enantioselectivity, and diastereoselectivity. Upon my arrival, we were interested in developing new titanium catalyzed processes with an emphasis on dual catalysis. Revisiting some of the fundamentals in titanium mediated redox chemistry, the reductive opening of epoxides is a well understood transformation. Titanosine dichloride is reduced with zinc or manganese to generate the Nugent Reagent Babu reagent. The oxophilic titanium 3 complex reacts readily with epoxides driven by an inner sphere interaction that relieves the ring strain upon epoxide opening, giving the putative beta alkoxyl radical intermediate. Seminal work by Nugent and Rajan Babu, and later Gansauer, demonstrated that reduction reactions with cyclohexadiene, addition reactions to electrophilic alkene acceptors, and elimination reactions to give exocyclic alkenes were possible. Teamed up with Kiyin, another postdoc in the group, we set out to combine the venerable epoxide opening reaction with some of the new cobalt-mediated hydrogen atom transfer, or HAT, chemistry that has been developing over the past few years. If all went well, we could obtain endocyclic allylic alcohols, and if we were lucky, we could embed some natural selectivity into the transformation as well. I'll spare you the details of the optimization and tell you that the catalytic zinc and titanosine dichloride was able to initiate the ring opening epoxide reaction. After screening a variety of cobalt complexes, we found that cobalt saline complexes worked in the transformation so long as a tetramethyl backbone was used. Interestingly, the reaction was markedly improved when the para position of the phenylate arene portion of the saline ligand was substituted with a CF3 group from a terp-butyl group and maintaining the ortho position as terp-butyl. We think that this may make the cobalt center less electron dense and allow better reactivity for the proposed HAT reaction. The BDE of the CH bond alpha to the radical has been found to be very weak by groups such as Sorensen and Shenvi, as low as 31 kcal per mole. Some cobalt-3 hydride complexes have been found to be up to 50 kcal per mole, and in this instance, the CF3 group likely increases this BDE relative to its third butyl counterpart. It's also important to note that this HAT reaction can also be viewed as a proton coupled electron transfer where the H atom is likely received onto the ligand similar to some recent work by the Peters lab, perhaps at the phenol moiety, and can be viewed more like a protonated cobalt-1 complex. Similar cobalt complexes have been proposed to have pKa's as low as 10, where we believe that the CF3 group contributes favorably to lower this pKa so that it may be deprotonated by triethylamine. Triethylamine hydrochloride was found to be vital to the reactivity, likely mediating several steps in this catalytic cycle, 
including liberating the allylic alcohol from the titanium complex, as well as stabilizing off-cycle titanium intermediates and preventing the formation of titanium-3 dimers. Accordingly, we found that cobalt-1-8 complex had a suitable reduction potential to reduce the titanium-4 back to the active titanium-3 intermediate using cyclic voltammetry studies. Finally, control reactions indicated that each reagent was vital to the observed reactivity. With the optimal conditions, a scope utilizing a variety of epoxides was considered. Exocyclic epoxides underwent the reaction with good to excellent yields. The epoxide openings followed the expected selectivity for ring opening to the more functionalized and stable alkyl radical. In some cases, the products were benzoyl protected in situ after the reaction to facilitate isolation. Enantiopure epoxides retained their stereochemistry throughout the reaction. Epoxides derived from natural product motifs such as carvone, nortropinone, and estrone were also well tolerated under the reaction conditions. When synthesizing epoxides from cholesterol derivatives, we were able to make the substrate with ratios favoring the alpha or beta diastereomer. Interestingly, a kinetic resolution with the diastereomers was observed where the beta diastereomer fully reacted to give the corresponding beta anomer. Using a diastereomeric ratio favoring the alpha isomer, only the beta diastereomer underwent reaction and the alpha diastereomer was fully re-isolated. We also used some substrates that would be indicative of known radical rearrangements. When using the Farnesyl-derived epoxide, to our surprise, we only isolated the non-cyclized product where we had expected the cyclization to be the major product. This indicated that the HAT step may be very fast using the described cobalt complex. Using pinene oxide, a ratio of non-ring opened to cyclobutene ring opened product was found to be approximately 2 to 1, indicating that a radical intermediate is at play. When developing the enantioselective conditions, it was realized that Kagon's complex could give the desired product in good enantioselectivity in line with previous literature using the neomenthol-derived titanium CP complex, however, in dramatically lower yield. We hypothesized that HAT step may be suffering from steric clashes involving the tert-butyl group on the saline ligand and the neomenthol-derived CP ligand. We initially set out to make the saline complex with the CF3 at the para position and a methyl group at the ortho position. However, when it proved difficult to synthesize in large quantities, a para derivative was employed. To our delight, the reactivity was restored, giving a natural selective epoxide isomerizations of mesoepoxide in high yields. The perichloro and orthomethyl saline ligand provides an ideal balance of sterics and electronics to achieve the desired reaction. We were also encouraged to see that a few linear epoxides were tolerated under these conditions where some elimination byproducts were observed when using the corresponding titanosine dichloride conditions. With that, I hope I've shown you that radical chemistry has many interesting facets, especially when considering redox neutral reaction design. I'd like to give a big thanks to Louie and Song for having me in their labs over the years, as well as Professors Pratt and Skyano at UOttawa for helpful discussions. I'd also like to thank Professors Rajan Babu and Flowers for interesting discussions and good company over lunch. I want to give a shout out to Spencer Pip, Kian Yi, Hanu Kim, Nankai Fu, and Lu Song, all of which have recently started their academic careers and I can't wait to see what awesome research comes from their groups in the future. Finally, I want to thank you all for taking the time to look, listen, and think about my favorite kind of chemistry. As alluded to by my Twitter handle, I am the Rad Chemist and love everything that is rad. Please feel free to contact me via email and visit my website. I'm happy to talk about radical chemistry, methodology design in organic synthesis, and give advice on careers and research in organic chemistry to those who are interested. Have a good one, eh? And keep your stick on the ice. Thank you for tuning in for another Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Terry for a great talk. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out. To support this initiative, help us out by telling your peers about this resource. Check our webpage, synthesis-workshop.com, or follow us on Twitter to stay up to date. See you all next time.